is this Shashinsky independent stamping up demonstrator here of Izzy's Crafty Bees. I'm here to bring you the Kangaroo and Company class in the post. So let's get making some cards. Kangaroo and Company class in the post was designed to be made with this bundle from Stampin' Up. It comprises of this Kangaroo and Company stamp set, which is a photopolymer stamp set. And it contains 20 stamps. And it coordinates beautifully with the Kangaroo dies to be used in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And the die set comprises 11 dies that match the images within the stamp set. And the first card for the class is this cutie. And this was with a nod to Valentine's Day, although not necessarily just for giving on Valentine's Day. As the sentiment says, hopping by just to say, love you much. And you can tell somebody who you love that you love them much at any time of year. I've left the inside of the card blank, but of course you could stamp additional sentiments inside. So I'm going to show you what you get in your kit. So for those people who've purchased the Class in the Post kit, you will receive a white envelope, pre-cut and scored card base in Rococo Rose. And this is one of the Stampin' Up! in colours that will be retiring this year, 2021. You'll also receive a piece of soft sea foam card for your first base layer. You will have received a piece of white cardstock that measures, I think, about 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres for stamping the image of the kangaroo. A pre die cut circle using designer series paper and a small piece of Rococo Rose cardstock for stamping the sentiment. You'll also have received one strip of white and red resin heart embellishments and we're going to use just three of the white ones on this card and you'll be using some of the others in the other projects within the class. Now for this project I'm also going to use the following ink colour so you might want to gather your own ink and your own adhesive. I'm using Memento Black Ink along with three alcohol blend pens to stamp and colour the body of the kangaroo. I'm also going to use Stays on Black ink and a Rococo Rose um, stamp and write marker to stamp and colour in the cute hearts. And I'm going to use Soft Sea Foam green ink to stamp some tiny hearts onto the background of the green layer the soft sea foam layer just for added interest. You can also stamp the kangaroo if you don't have blends or you don't enjoy colouring in you can also stamp the kangaroo onto some coloured cardstock just using black ink and for this example I've coloured in the bib of the kangaroo using a chalk marker and added a tiny bit of pink to the inside of the ear the tip of the nose and I've outlined using another marker, but that's not necessary. And again, because the um, sentiment fits snugly in the pocket, it's not even necessary to colour in the bib of the kangaroo. So if you're the kind of crafter who just likes to stamp and go, you could stamp your kangaroo onto a piece of coloured cardstock. So let's get moving and do some stamping. Oops. So, first thing I'm going to do is take my base layer of soft sea foam and I'm going to take from the stamp set the little tiny heart stamp and it really is a teeny tiny stamp but I didn't want it to get overlooked I'm going to mount that onto a clear block and I'm going to just stamp some random hearts right across in a diagonal across this base layer and I'm not going to think too much about it I'm just going to stamp them fairly randomly 
in a diagonal and you can choose whether you go from top right to bottom left or vice versa. This is merely to add a little bit of extra interest to the background. And sometimes to add interest, it's nice to do some that are actually half on and half off the piece of cardstock. Remember, you don't need to do anything in the middle because we're going to cover this with that circle, die cut circle of designer series paper. And if you can't see it, it's not there. Now, while we've got this ink and we've got the tiny heart, why don't we go to our envelope and add some decoration to our envelope flap? So I'm going to use that ink again and that teeny tiny heart and I'm just going to add some more random hearts to the flap of that envelope. And you can go as many or as few as you want. You might also want to add a few to the front. Because we never like naked envelopes. So I'm going to just close that ink pad and put that to one side and let's start work on the main piece of stamping that we're going to do which is the kangaroo. Now I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm going to get my kangaroo stamp from the stamp set and I'm going to mount it on a large block. So for this image I'm going to use Excuse the crashing banging block E. It's a nice big block. And I'm just going to lay that stamp down. And I know that for this um, project, I need to stamp my kangaroo image. And I also need to stamp my cluster of hearts image from the set. So I'm going to mount that on the block as well. But I'm going to stamp this one in stays on. So I'm going to prepare myself by popping the stamp on top of the ink pad that I'm going to use and that's something that I do quite often is I'll actually pre-mount all of the stamps onto blocks and especially if I'm using several colours of ink I might pop the actual stamp on top of the ink pad that I'm going to use especially if I'm going to use two different kinds of black ink and I will just explain why I'm using two different kinds of black ink so I'm going to take my stamp my ink pad to my stamp because the actual stamp is larger than the ink pad so I find it easier to stamp to ink up my stamp this way and I find with photopolymer stamps sometimes the first time that you ink them it might look like the ink is not um, adhering to the actual stamp so it's worth inking and stamping off onto a piece of scrap a few times it's almost like priming the stamp and I'm going to stamp that straight down. Now this is a line stamp, a line image stamp, so I shouldn't need to use a stamping pierce mat. Even though this is a photopolymer stamp, with a large photopolymer stamp I would usually suggest and recommend that you place your cardstock on top of a stamping pierce mat. But generally if it's a line um, image, a line drawn image, um, you don't actually need always to use that stamp and pierce mat underneath. Now I'm also going to stamp on this piece of cardstock. Let me just pop the lid back on my ink for the moment. I'm going to stamp those hearts using stays on. And I'm going to stamp quickly because stays on and photopolymer tend to stick on the cardstock and sometimes can pull it off and you can see I've actually got a grey or not quite a dark image there so I'm going to go again with that one. You'll also need to keep a piece of this Whisper White um, cardstock to die cut this tab. Now if you're one of the customers who placed an order for the stamp set only and not the dies, I've included a pre-die cut um, tab for you. Now the reason that I've chosen to use two different inks, stays on a memento, is because you need memento black ink, which is a, um, a dye based ink, to use with alcohol marker pens. And Stampin' Up Stampin' Blends are an alcohol based marker. And I've used 
a solvent-based ink stays on to stamp the hearts because I'm going to choose to use a Stampin' Right marker to colour the hearts in. And the reason I'm colouring the hearts in with a Stampin' Right marker is because I didn't have a blend in Rococo Rose and I wanted the hearts to match the actual cardstock colour. So I'm going to go ahead and do some colouring in and I just want to encourage you to think about using Stampin' Blends because they're actually a really easy way of colouring in. Stampin' Blends come with a brush end and a bullet end and I'm going to use the brush end and I'm going to choose to use crumb cake and I'm going to start by using the light crumb cake just to simply colour the entire piece really quickly. I'm leaving the inside of the ear and the tip of the nose because I want to add some pink tone to that. And I'm also going to leave the um, chest, the bib of the kangaroo. And I'm just going to colour really quickly in the lightest shade of crumb cake. And the brilliant thing about blends is you can really scribble. You really can scribble and we don't get left with those marks like you do with a fibre tip pen. And you don't need um, any fancy technique like you might do with watercolouring. Here we go, that's that first layer of colour. So I've got a nice base layer. Now I'm just going to do a few strokes around the edge and I'm going to come back in with my dark crumb cake blend. And these are brand new because I wore out my other crumb cake. That's how much I use it. And for this layer, I'm going to go very lightly just around the edge to add a bit of a depth of colour. And by doing this, and I'm going to come back in and blend, by doing this, it just makes any image that would perhaps be three-dimensional, like a kangaroo is an animal, it would be three-dimensional. It would just make it look three-dimensional. And again, you can see I'm not using any, I'm kind of any smooth strokes or any fancy colouring in technique. I'm simply adding a bit of a dark colour. Now I'm thinking that under this lovely chunky pouch there would be naturally a bit of shadow anyway so I'm adding a bit more of that colour there. Otherwise I'm just kind of going around the edges. Now I'm going to come back in because that looks quite harsh now and I'm going to blend that dark into the light. It's a very simple process of going over the top and taking the colour and that dark colour stays around the edge and you end up with a lighter patch in the middle and I do know some um, crafters who do some amazing colouring technique using alcohol blends. But for demonstrating and class purposes, I think it's nice to be able to show how easy it is to not be afraid of using an alcohol blending pen, thinking that you have to try and get really excellent sort of graphic designer, cartoonist type finishes. It's just such a forgiving tool to use. And there we have it fairly quickly, a coloured in kangaroo. Now I'm going to just add a tiny bit of pink to that ear, the tip of that nose. And I've actually chosen to use um, Flirty Flamingo because there's really only a tiny little patch. It doesn't have to match the Rococo rose of the base card. Okay, now I'm going to colour in these hearts with my Rococo rose Stampin' Right marker, which is actually a water-based ink marker. And again, 
I'm not going to use any fancy colouring in techniques. I'm simply going to add colour. And if you're again, if you're not um, bothered about colouring, or you really don't like colouring, or you don't have this marker, the simple thing to do. Let me just finish these last couple. simple thing to do would be to now go ahead and stamp the sentiment and the hearts using your piece of Rococo Rose that I've sent you in your kit. So I'm going to use popping by just to say sentiment and I've already got those big chunky hearts and I'm going to just measure how much cardstock I've got. So I've supplied you with, um, I'm going to go back to Memento now use any black ink and you can stamp those hearts no colouring in required and I'm going to stamp that sentiment on the rest of the card so they're hopping by just to say now for those of you who purchased the kit you, if you purchase the bundle, you will now be able to die cut. And from the dies, you will need this piece, which creates the tab. And you will need this piece to cut out the hearts. And you will need, of course, the kangaroo. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those using my mini stamp and cut an emboss machine which I'll just bring in here. I need platform number one for die cutting with a base plate number two and my piece of whisper white won't fit through as it is so you need to reduce that down just by trimming off the kangaroo. to cut this and I just want to give you a tip when using this mini machine because it's such a small machine and the um, depth between the rollers is so small what I found the best um, results I get is just by staggering my plates so I put my base plate number one down and my number two cutting plate just a few centimetres back from the end and then I place my top plate over the top and then it will actually form, I'm just going to do this, a pinch point and it will roll through the machine much easier. So I'm just going to lay that down and position that properly now. And of course if you're watching this back as it's a pre-recorded class you can fast forward through this. I wanted to actually do this live on air so I could give you that tip about the mini machine and that just rolls through really nicely now. And yeah, and the unique thing about this die and the fantastic thing is it pre-cuts, I'm just going to find my snips, it pre-cuts this beautiful slot in the pouch ready to pop the actual tab. Now if you're one of the class members who pre-purchased the class without the actual dies so you only purchase the stamp set you'll need to fussy cut the kangaroo and you will also need to very carefully if I just flip that over you'll need to very carefully just cut a little slot in the top if I bring in my kangaroo that I made using the coloured cardstock that's exactly what I did with this I fussy cut this one I didn't use the die and then I actually made a slot in the back and the way I did that was by placing a piece of foam underneath let me just use this piece instead so it's clear a piece of foam underneath and I started my slot by piercing the actual um, cutting along this line 
and I started to pierce it from the inside of the body and then I cut very carefully to just beyond the edge of the bib, taking great care not to actually cut right to the very end. So you actually get a slot and not a flap. I hope that helps. And now I'm going to just cut out the hearts. So let me just move that die to one side. I'm going to cut out the hearts and I'm going to cut out that tab. So the hearts that I've coloured in using this die and the little tab to stick them on. Now you can see we have our little tab and the next thing we want to do is stamp that, um, that second sentiment, love you much, and it's a really tiny sentiment. So I'm going to pop that on a small block and I'm actually going to stamp it directly onto the little tab. And I found that when using photopolymer stamps, because they're clear, and using tiny pieces of die cuts like this one, I found it much easier to actually stamp on the tab. And it's useful to remember you need to stamp your sentiment towards the bottom of that tab rather than towards the top. Because we need to stick our hearts over the top of the tab. So for those of you who purchased the, the kit, I've pre-cut you this, pre-die cut you this tab. So now you can stamp the sentiment, make, making sure that you stamp it towards the bottom of the tab and you can stick the hearts on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick the hearts on top. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue and quite a small dab. And I'm actually putting the glue onto the tab rather than on the hearts so that I know that the, it's in the right place. So let's go ahead and stick those hearts on the tab. lovely and that's ready to go in the kangaroo pouch so we've got our kangaroo and our hearts and also in the set we've got flowers as well as hearts and parcels and a baby roo that we can stick into the kangaroo's pouch which is really cute and I'm going to hand cut the sentiment and I just want hopping by just to say I don't want the high so I'm actually going to trim that down. I'm going to separate the hopping by and the just to say, I'm going to discard the rest. I'm going to trim those further. We're almost ready to assemble our card. Just have a tiny tidy up of the desk, popping those dies safely on my magnetic sheet. And let's go ahead and assemble the card. So we take our card base and we can quickly adhere. I'm just going to turn that over that way. Quickly adhere our base our base layer to the base card. And again, I'm going to choose to use liquid glue. You can use a glue of your choice. So if you're happiest with a tape runner, because this piece is laying flat, you can use a glue of your choice. I'm going to adhere the die cut circle of designer series paper. And this designer series paper is available free until the end of February 2021 by making a purchase of £45 from any of the, any of the current catalogues. 
and I'm now going to stick down my kangaroo and I want to stick the kangaroo using just um, some foam sticky pads so I'm going to use some stamping dimensionals so I'm just having a look to see if I've got a sheet with some whole ones on which I have so I'm going to pop a dimensional under the head of the kangaroo and I'm going to carefully position a dimensional underneath the feet and um, I left the tail just one under the head and one under the feet making sure that the body of the kangaroo is left free for this piece to actually slide in and out so that's just a point to note and if you're worried about that you can pre put the um, sentiment and hearts into the pouch before you pop on your sticky pads so that you know that the sticky pads won't interfere Actually, we can use three sticky pads, some three dimensionals there, and we can stick the kangaroo straight on to the card. I love this kangaroo, it's so cute. Now, I'm going to position this cutie so that his feet and tail are just slightly hanging over that circle. It just makes it more interesting to the eye if we have parts of an image that just overlap a background piece. It's just a design tip there. And we can see that the mechanics of the sentiment in the pouch work beautifully. Such a unique die set. I think it's so cute and so clever. And I'm going to pop my sentiment on. It's going to be stuck flat. So again, I'm using um, my liquid glue. It's my favourite adhesive. Gives me a bit of wiggle room. And we don't need much because we don't want it squidging. Hopping by, just to say. And we can space that out just as we want. Thank you very much. How cute is that? Now we're going to finish the whole thing off using some of these resin heart embellishments. These, oh, I should have put them out of the packet, apologies, because the camera doesn't actually like um, cellophane rattles. It tends to interfere with the sound and the picture, so apologies. And I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool just to pop them off. They're self-adhesive, so I'm going to use this spatula end of the Take Your Pick tool. And these are in the um, January to June mini catalogue, 2021. And I just find using the spatula end, it makes them just a little bit more manageable. Now, these are the white ones I'm popping on. If you've got um, blender pens and you've got the colour that you wish to use um, or you're matching a different colour. So, for example, if I wanted to colour these in green, I could actually use, um, I've got a bright green here. I think that's granny apple green. Yes, I could actually use my blends to add colour to those white resin hearts because the alcohol markers are brilliant for recolouring um, embellishments such as these resin hearts and the pearls, basic pearl, jewel, pearl jewels and um, even the rhinestones you can add a bit of colour to. Let's just pop another. How many did I put on there? There's three. Let's have an odd number. And that's card number one finished. And now we're going to look at card number two of the Kangaroo and Company Class in the Post. So this is card number two and this one opens horizontally or uh, landscape. Another cutie with these two little joeys hopping by to say this time thanks a bunch. So this time I've not used the large kangaroo die with the pocket. I've actually used these flower images, stepped them up onto stamping dimensionals to create a pocket of my own. And I'm going to just show you how to do that now. So if you subscribed to the class in the post, you will have received your kit. And the kit for this card, you will receive a white envelope, a card base, which is Bumblebee and it's pre-cut and scored. 
you will have received a piece of white cardstock which is approximately 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters a piece of black cardstock with a piece of just jade cardstock to mat and layer like so and a piece of designer series patterned paper to use as that strip across you should also have received in your kit some um, oh, embellishments which I've just popped down and covered up by something. Let me just get my ink. Uh, oh, here they are. Some enamel dot embellishments. You will have received a full strip of the different colours. So I'm just going to get those out and pop them on my desk. there to hand now I'm going to use memento black ink for my stamping and for my coloring I'm going to use stamp and blends in colors that just complement the designer series paper now the color that complements this designer series paper is actually just jade but I'm going to use light Bermuda Bay which goes perfectly well and I'm going to color in the kangaroos using um, gray granite light and dark and I'm going to use Daffodil, um, Daffodil Delight, yes it is Daffodil Delight for my flowers and I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo for my flowers and I'm going to use the coordinating dies from the die set and the stamped images that you need for this card from your um, stamp set are the two baby kangaroos, two joeys, the flower image the hopping by to say hi sentiment and the thanks a bunch sentiment which I've got here pre-mounted onto my blocks I'm just going to stand them on my workspace and it's quite a simple card to put together so we're just going to go ahead and do the stamping stamping first of all so I'm going to just take a seat and let's stamp some of those cute Oh, we also need the flowers. Did I get the flowers? No, I didn't. Yeah, from this stamp set, you also need the flowers. But let me just mount those on a block. So let's go ahead and do our stamping. So we, oh, we need to stamp our two cute joeys, which we're going to die cut, or if you didn't order the dies, you'll be fussy cutting these cuties. And again, because it's a line image, I don't need to use a stamping pierce mat underneath it, even though it's um, a photopolymer stamp. So there's Joey number one and here's cutie number two. I'm not going to stamp my little thanks a bunch sentiment yet because I'm going to do the same as I did with card number one and stamp it when I've die cut the tag. I'm just going to stamp um, hopping by to say down in this corner and then I'm going to stamp my flower images up here I've got plenty of white cardstock so tap 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 and I'm going to stamp this twice if you wanted a more full image you could go three times there's plenty of cardstock provided in your kit and I'm just going to pop the lid back on my ink and I'm going to go ahead and colour those and if again if you're not um, a fan of colouring in you'll get equally pretty results or cute results stamping your joeys onto coloured cardstock with no problem at all and if you're not into colouring um, but you wanted to stamp the uh, flowers you could again stamp them onto coloured cardstock and just have one monotone sort of coloured block there or you could find some designer series paper and do some fussy cutting of, the, of some flowers but with our stamping blends it's really easy to get good coloured results so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the light colour grey granite first of all and just very quickly work that colour all over the image I'm not taking any time at all, I'm just very quickly laying down the colour. I'm leaving the middle of the ear and the tip of the nose just to put a cute 
pop of pink on there. And I'm leaving the bib of this little standing joey here. I'm going to come in with the dark and just do a little outline all around the image. Just really quickly, I'm not taking very much time at all, just around the outsides. See how quick it is just to use these blend pens, they're just so fantastic. Come back in with my light one and just blend that dark into the light, just so we don't have any harsh lines. But again, I'm working really quickly. To demonstrate just how easy these blender pens are to use to get cute results. So a little bit of pink and this time I'm using the bullet tip just to add a bit of colour into those smaller areas. How cute! Such a cute little thing. Now I'm going to turn that round and I'm going to put, pop some colour onto these flowers and I'm going to start with my, I'm going to again use the bullet tip just because the small areas, I'm going to start with my four petaled flowers. So this image has some four petaled flowers and some sort of swirly rose type flowers and I'm just going to start with the four petal flowers and colour them all in yellow really quickly no shading no light or shade just a one layer of colour I'm going to colour all of the leaves in with this sort of turquoise green with its Bermuda Bay and the reason I'm using this one is simply because I don't have a just jade um, blend. Now I'm going to in the middle in between the flowers I'm actually going to colour that space as well in with jade just to make the flowers pop in that background. I think you'll agree with me when I say this is such a quick method of colouring. You really don't have to think about it. Nothing technical, nothing fancy. Oh, I've missed a leaf. There we go. And coming in with some pink, and the pink I'm using on this one is Flirty Flamingo. And I'm going to just use the grey granite again with the bullet and, and just put the centres of those flowers in just to finish it off. I think you'll agree that's really quick colouring. It's ever so easy to use the blender pens, which I'm just going to put to one side and save me a bit of space. Now, first thing I'm going to do is trim down this piece of cardstock and separate those images. I'm going to now trim off my sentiment and I'm going to use some big scissors just to give me a quick straight line. Much quicker than using the smaller bladed scissors. So I'm going to get rid of the word high. I'm going to take the hopping by just to say those pieces to one side and I'm going to just pop those safely up the top end of my workspace so I don't lose them. I'm going to clear a space now just to bring in my mini machine and I'm going to die cut these images. 
and again if you didn't order the matching dies you can simply fussy cut these images they're not too complicated and I'm going to see if I can fit because I've only got one die for one oh I've missed a flower there bear with me I've missed colouring a flower let's just pop a bit of colour on that one there we go um, I've only got one die for the flower image so I'm going to try and cut both joeys and the flower together so let's line them up three images die cut with one pass on one wind of the handle if that makes sense let's just get that started I'm just holding this down so it doesn't move there we go super I've got those images Always static when you stick to the plates. Now I've flipped this base plate so it sits a bit flatter, and I'm going to do another pass with this. And I'm going to, if you remember, we need this piece as well. So I've brought some of the scrap that I chopped off when I did the sentiment, and I'll pop this piece down, and we'll do the second set of flowers. Let's pop those on there. simple. Let's pop those through there. Okay, so now we can assemble all our pieces. We've got our two flower pieces. We've got our little tab and we're going to um, stick our joey on the top of the tab, the little little joey here and we need to stamp a sentiment on there I'm just going to make sure I pop my die pieces onto my magnetic um, holder so I don't lose them so now we're ready to assemble the card we've got all of our pieces the other thing that you should have received in your kit is a length of white twine to go around this piece so that's what we're going to do first first of all actually is put our twine round this piece before we actually stick this down. Yes, that's how I did it. So what I'm going to do, I want to tie my bow in the middle. So I'm going to pop my thumb in the middle. Just pull off enough. You should have had a pre-cut piece, so I'm using a bobbin here. So I'm going to overlap, Lay the twine on with an overlap at the top and put my thumb in the middle where I want to tie my knot and bow. And I'm going to go around once and twice and put my thumb back in the middle and I'm going to trim my twine here with just a little overlap. Now you, you should have a pre-cut piece if you um, placed an order for the class and I'm going to tie a straightforward knot and a bow in the middle. Try not to pull it too tight because you don't want to pull the um, designer series paper. And I'm all thumbs and fingers. You don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want to pull the designer series paper into a, a curve. So once you've tied your knot and your bow, you can then put your finger on and faff. And have a good faff until you've got your bow looking how you want it. If you want your bow to sit like this, with your tails hanging down, you tell it to do that. Take the ends of the bow and pull it tight and then faff again until you get your knot and your bow in the right place. Now the reason I did that first was because I can actually glue this layer and pop it down underneath. 
but I'm going to stick this layer down first so I'm going to just flip that and again I'm going to use a wet glue glue of your choice because this is laying flat and I'm just going to carefully put a bead of glue on the ends because I don't want the um, twine to actually pull these ends up off of the card base once it's stuck down so here we go be careful double check that your cards opening the right way and lay that layer down there we go and now we can actually um, adhere these two layers, mats and layers together. Again, glue of your choice. If you want to use a tape glue, that's your choice, it's your preference. When I'm doing layers, I like a wet glue so I can actually make sure once it's got contact, I've got a bit of wiggle in that I can just maneuver it so I've got an equal gap all the way around. And we can actually go ahead and stick this layer down underneath that twine. This is laying flat. So we'll just lift the twine carefully and slide that underneath. And stick that down in the middle. Now I'm going to stick my... Um, flowers together and I'm just going to overlap them now I wanted my um, this side of the flowers almost like a flat side with the leaves poking at the bottom and I wanted to overlap that with just so it's sort of on, not on top of each other but just parted so I actually just overlap them slightly like that so I've got these leaves at the bottom and these two leaves at the top I just felt that that gave it more interest rather than sort of mirroring it that way. Personal, just a personal thing. Now I'm going to be very careful and just put a little bit of glue onto the top of this piece for the overlap. I'm not going to add too much glue because I don't want it to interfere with any sticky behind to interfere with this piece. This needs to run freely. And I'm just going to pop that in position and it goes over the top of the twine. I'm just going to pop it in position and again it just overlaps this square. <coughs> Excuse me. Just for interest to the eye. If everything was contained within the square it would really look boring to the eye. So we're just going to pop that on there and I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals. But what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to stamp and assemble this Joey here. I'm going to stamp the sentiment. Um, and this time I've chosen to use thanks a bunch as the sentiment. A bunch of flowers, thanks a bunch. So I'll just bring in my black ink. Here we go. And remembering to stamp the sentiment towards the bottom of the little piece. I don't know what to call this piece, this little um tab I suppose I could call it and if you ordered the class online if you ordered the class in the post and you didn't order the dies I've pre die cut you this piece just to save you time you could quite easily cut yourself um, a piece from a piece of cardstock and it would work it would work just as well but I really like this shape I think it helps it just to certainly helps it to go in the pocket of the big kangaroo on the other card so now i can stick my joey to the top and again like in the first card i'm just going to put a bead of glue on the tab and not onto the joey to ensure that i don't get any sticky residue behind i'm just going to check yes i did stick it on top that's grand 
So now we've got our joey and we've got our flowers. And what I want to do is just practice the position of the, the little kangaroo with the flowers and think about where I'm going to position the dimensionals underneath. And for this one, I'm going to use mini dimensionals. And again, if you don't have any of these, not to worry. If you've got some large dimensionals or sticky pads, you can simply use the pieces from the outside. And if you snip in between those pieces, you can use these small bits here like this, that small piece. I'm going to use small dimensionals and I'm going to pick up the whole ensemble. Oh, big word, write it down. And I'm going to actually position my dimensionals around the joey. I'm going to pop one there as a stop. And one, I'm not sure if I'm going to fit one on that side. Let's see. Fit one just there. And I've got space to fit one at the bottom. So I know that I've got a nice neat pocket for Joey to pop up, and pop up and down in. I'm going to go ahead, peel the backing off and stick it down. And so you could use a different sentiment from the set. You can make exactly the same card for a birthday. Just pop that down. And practice with the Joey slide straight in. He's great. He's got that dimensional as a stop, so he's not going to fall all the way through. So if I just bring in the stamp set again, and we can see we've got some parcels about the same sort of size as the flowers. So we could stamp some parcels and build up a pile of parcels here. And we could still use the Joey and the little Joey, and we could use a different sentiment. So we could say, happy for you, it's your day for a birthday card. It would look really cute. We could use the envelope and we could maybe have a couple of envelopes and we could actually um, use just a note. Stopping by to say hi, just a note, and we could put the just a note inside. So we can have a real good play with this stamp set. It's really cute and really versatile. And I'm going to pop the second Joey on dimensionals once again. And this time I'm going to go for um, a large dimensional. Let me find some whole ones rather than bits. I'm going to use a couple of large dimensionals for this cute guy or girl. And I'm going to pop this one just to this side and again over the top of the twine rather than, oh that one should have been over the top of the twine. Oh goodness me, silly me. When you stick yours on, please don't stick it underneath. Um, please don't stick it underneath the twine. So I'm going to rescue myself by using the flat of my sit snips to just snip those bottom dimensionals. And I'm going to hook my twine underneath carefully. And I'm going to just add another small dimensional in exactly the same place as before. If you ever stick down, this is an emergency exit, what I call an emergency exit. If you ever stick anything down using dimensionals and you need to lift it off, don't ever be tempted to peel it. Just get your scissors and snip it from underneath. And I bet you all spotted that error as I was sticking it down. So here we go. I'm going to now stick down my sentiment and finish off with just some of those embellishments. So by you need to just take care with your glue to get it all over everywhere because they are quite small sentiments when you trim them down this small I'm going to come in with just another little bit of uh, blobbed glue there, so I'm going to just rub that off. Let me just finish off with these um, embellishments and I'm going to come in with another tip just before we finish. So I just finished off um, this time actually with four 
um, embellishments. I don't usually use an even number, I usually always use an odd number. But I felt that by having three here and just one up here, it worked quite well. So I'm going to go with the matching colours. These are the in colour um, enamel dot embellishments from the annual catalogue. And these are the in colours for 20. Um, oh, I've just, just parted that one. I think it's because the glue dots underneath these embellishments are so strong that sometimes when you put a pokey tool or a, um, in this case, my take your pick tool underneath, it can be a bit too vicious. So I'm going to go back to using my fingernails for these. There we go. Um, these are the in colours for 20. 20, 29, oh, where am I? 2020 to 2022. Gosh, yes, I had to get my head around that one. It's been a weird year. We don't know where we are. Okay, so I've got another little tip for this card. When I road tested this card, um, I showed it to my husband and he said, but how would you know that that Joey was going to come out and finish off the sentiment? And I said, well, I would know because I'm a crafter and I can see it kind of moves and I just can see that he's there. But if you didn't know and you were giving this card to somebody who didn't know, what you can do is actually add a small arrow. And I'm just going to go in and get my stamp and write marker in basic black. And you could add a small arrow like that to your card and that might just indicate to somebody that they had to lift out the little joey to finish off the sentiment and that's card number two from the kangaroo and company class in the post and in this part of the video i want to demonstrate to you four gorgeous note cards as part of the kangaroo and company class in the post so in this part of the class, we're going to use four note cards from this pack of Sweet Little Valentines cards and more. And they're from the January to June mini catalogue. And they're actually on page 16 and they're quite easily overlooked. And what I did with this pack of cards was I split it down for each member of the class in the post group. So everybody who joined the class in the post will receive um, four cards from this pack. And the pack actually contains 10 cards and 10 envelopes with toppers. And um, the colours actually included in the cards are detailed in the catalogue and they're not detailed on the packet of cards. So I just wanted to point that out to anybody who is interested in purchasing the pack of cards from the catalogue. So in your kit, if you're joining the class in the post, and these are the four designs which I'll just move to one side. And in your kit, you will receive four envelopes and four cards. And they come in two different designs. So the two different designs of card in the actual pack uh, and they're printed with this gorgeous gold foil. So there's one with spots in gold foil and one with stripes in gold foil. And you'll, in your kit, you'll get two of each of those. And please note that the envelopes actually coordinate. So one inside design of the envelopes printed in gold foil has stripes. And one of the envelope designs has gold foil printed spots. So again, you'll receive two two of each card, two of each envelope. You'll also receive four of the topper cards. And these are printed double sided. And again, there are two different, four different designs, two different cards. So one is printed with you are loved. And on the other side, this kind of watercolor swish. So you'll have two of those. And the other design is hearts, so two large hearts and several small hearts, double sided. And you'll have two of those in your kit. Also in your kit, you will receive a quarter of a sheet of white cardstock, a small piece of petal pink cardstock, two vellum doilies, a piece of gold foil, 
You've also received your strip of um, resin hearts. You will receive a strip of champagne rhinestone basic jewels and you should have received some twine in both pink, petal pink and white in your kit. So let's go ahead and make these notelets and I'm just going to share with you the designs closely first. Let me just pop my materials to one side and I'm going to add to that some black ink and I've chosen to use stays on, some pool party ink and some melon mambo ink and they're coordinating colours with the note cards. So I'm just again going to pop those to one side and the stamp image stamps from the stamp set that we're going to use we're going to stick with this sentiment and we're going to use the just say hi we're going to use this image of the envelope and we're going to use um, just a note and the tiny hello stamp so we want to go ahead and pop those onto blocks ready to use now there is a coordinating die in the matching dies for the envelope and it's this rectangle but I actually chose just to simply fussy cut the envelopes because I found it was much quicker than winding them through and if you count them I've actually got nine envelopes that I um, cut through. So the first thing I want you to do is actually to take a piece of Whisper White and we're going to measure a piece of white card for this card here, this note card. And we're going to measure that piece and using your trimmer I want you to trim a piece that is three and a half centimetres by eight centimetres. So I'm just going to bring my trimmer in and I'm going to trim a piece three and a half centimetres by eight centimetres so that I know I've got enough white for this card and for the rest using the rest of the white card I'm actually going to use I'm going to pop that to one side I'm going to use this for all the rest of my stamping and that's the only bit of trimming that we need to do with the white card so I'm going to pop that one to one side I'm going to use um, a striped and a striped card base for that one so I'm going to actually pop that to one side with that card base so I know that I've got it safe and we're actually going to work on rather than working on the individual cards we're going to actually work on our stamping all at once on this piece of whisper white so what we actually need to stamp is three envelopes in pool party and we need to stamp six envelopes in melon mambo and you'll notice that two of those envelopes are in a slightly lighter shade so i'm actually going to use second generation stamping for this envelope and i'll explain what that is when i get going we also need to stamp our three little sentiments that are in white so we need to stamp just a note and we can use this little off cut here for that and just to say hi and hello stamped three times so I'm going to take a seat and get stamping. So let's start with stamping our envelope in pull party ink. Bear in mind we're going to cut all of these, fussy cut all of these. So I'm going to stamp three of those. I'm now going to clean my stamp and for that I'm just going to use a Simply Chamois and now I'm going to stamp my envelopes in Melon Mambo and remember I need six of them, four of them in full strength two of them in part strength so I can stamp my first one second generation and then I'm going to ink this and I'm going to stamp it off onto some scrap 
which is just to one side here in my scrap notebook and stamp another one second generation. I'm now going to stamp my hello sentiment for this card in Melon Mambo. It's a really tiny stamp so just be careful and because I actually want to cut it out all in one I'm going to stamp it just in the corner. I can see I've got plenty in this corner. I'm going to just take care and I'm going to stamp it directly underneath one another so it actually fades down into a sort of ombre effect. Now I've gone a little bit wonky there and find it quite difficult to stamp when I'm filming because I need to get my head right, up, right over my stamp to be able to do that lining up very quickly. Um, so please take care with yours and I'm sure you'll get some good results stamping directly underneath with, you, with your eyes over the top. I'm now going to stamp this sentiment, just a note, in black. So let me just bring in my black ink. So just a note. You see we've got plenty of white cardstock here so I could actually stamp that one here. Oh, let me do that one again. It stays on ink is quite sticky. That's lovely, it's a bit darker. And the reason I've chosen to use stays on is because in your kit you will also have received a piece of gold foil and that's for this card, this note card. I thought it looked really cute, stamped the hello, stamped in um, black onto gold foil. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on the gold foil. And a water-based ink would not have stayed on the gold foil because the gold foil isn't porous. So we needed the stays on solvent ink to actually stamp the hello onto there. And I am going to just pop that to one side to make sure it does get a chance to dry. And now I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut. Um, oh, I needed to stamp, sorry. One more sentiment before I put my black away. We want just to say hi, so we're going to use the sentiment hopping by just to say hi. And let's ink that up and stamp that. And again, what I find with photopolymer stamps is that they're quite a sticky stamp, sticky rubber, and the sticky ink and the sticky rubber together going to mess me around today because I'm demonstrating. Good. I want just to say hi, so that's good. And that's just to prove that even demonstrators are just crafters and we have to sometimes have a second go. So now we've got all of our stamped pieces, we can actually go ahead and fussy cut them all and um, have them all ready to assemble the cards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use my big scissors as well as my small snips. So I use my big scissors to do the long cuts. are all our little tricky pieces ready to go. 
Now I want to just have a little um, discussion about this layer here. And for this layer I used the this card, this note card base, and I trimmed it down. So I simply trimmed it so that we couldn't see the middle piece. And I trimmed it by, rather than um, measuring, I trimmed it by little scallops. So one, two, three, four, five scallops. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring my trimmer in and trim that one down. And I trimmed it um, by five scallops by the full width. So if I just trim off in the trimmer and make sure it's lined up really nicely. If I just trim off the first two scallops here and line it up carefully in my trimmer, making sure that we're all square, just trim off that piece and then turn it and we're going, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five and line it up in my trimmer so the valley of that little scallop there and there line up and trim that off and so we have a base there to actually pop our little piece of whisper white on and that's for the base of there and we're going to put a vellum doily underneath this piece as well for added interest so that's the only other piece of trimming that we need to do and that was for one of our cards. Now you can save these pieces and you could use them for example on another project. Um, let me just get a piece of card. So you could use them on another project to give you a nice scalloped edge with those pierced holes as well. So don't throw these pieces away, keep them to one side for maybe a future project. So let's go ahead and assemble some of these cards. So I'm going to start with this one as this one is one of the, um, probably the most complicated one, I would think. So I'm just going to get my bone folder and really burnish that crease. So it just sits a bit flatter instead of jumping about all the time. And I'm going to position my um, vellum doily onto the card and for this one I'm going to actually use a tape glue, I'm going to use stamp and seal and I'm actually just going to put a piece, a little run of um, tape glue right in the middle of the card. Sorry if my head just went into shock, just so that that will stick that vellum doily down to the middle of the card. I'm now going to stick this piece flat across the whole of the note card and again because I'm sticking onto something that's textured I'm actually going to use the tape runner again I'm going to use stamp and seal just get that started there we go I'm going to stick that layer on next and I'm just taking care here to make sure that I've got an equal spacing at either side and I've got two scallops above and two scallops of my vellum doily below. I'm now going to stick my piece, oh I'm not going to stick my piece of whisper white on just yet, I'm actually going to line up my little envelopes and stick them down. So I'm going to start with my centre one so that I know that I've got room either side and what I always do when I'm looking at spacing things equally is I actually lay them down dry and unstuck to start with, just so that my eye can look at those images and know just what kind of spacing I've got in between each one. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, if you um, feel you need to use something like a grid sheet, then by all means bring in a piece of grid paper. I'm just looking for some that's relatively unscathed. I've got a piece here. Now my camera doesn't like grid sheet so I'll just bring this in for a moment just to explain. So I might use my grid sheet to find the centre point and then I can, I've got something to be working with to make sure that I've always lined it up nice and square. I tend to be, that's if you're a what I would call a precision engineer type crafter. 
I am a little bit of a let's stick it by eye crafter so I know by laying it out what kind of gaps I've got in between so I can go ahead and stick this centre um, envelope down and for this one I'm going to use wet glue because I've got that bit of wiggle room and I'm going to put my glue on my centre one with my other loose one still in position so that I know I've got that little bit of wiggle room and I can get that in just the right position. Now I can go ahead and stick the other two down. Again we don't need too much glue. This Tombow is a nice strong glue if you're using our multi-purpose liquid glue. we've got our own and you can see I had that was slightly wonky so I had just that wiggle room before the glue set just to get that in position and I'm happy with that now I'm going to go ahead and stick my just a note on top I haven't used any dimensionals but by layering it up you get that um, little bit of extra dimension on top and now I can go ahead and stick that layer on top here and again glue of your choice it's going to be laid down flat so if you're happy with tape glue or wet glue go ahead and stick that layer down and you should have that nice um, border of pierced holes and that printed gold foil on there and just to finish that card off that note card off we're going to use some of those adorable resin hearts and we're just going to use a couple of the red ones this time oh, I should have used my turkey pig till because look what happens they just get stuck anywhere but where you want them so here we go let's see if I can rescue that there we go and they fit just perfectly on top of that little heart on the envelope. And these resin hearts are available in the January to June mini catalogue and that's note card number one finished. So let's move on to note card number two. Let's go for this one. Again it's quite a simple one. So for this one we'll need one of the spotted card bases, that lovely ombre spotted card base and we'll need the note card that's printed with all the hearts, the topper card we'll need some of our twine, the pink twine you can see that it's already stamped with love you so if you wanted to leave that and you didn't want to add the gold hello, you could leave that. But I would just tie the twine maybe a little bit higher and add some of the uh, rhinestones and we could call that card done. So I'm going to tie my twine round. I'm going to hold it with my thumb and I'm just going to go around once, but I'm going to overlap it enough to be able to allow me to tie a good knot and a bow. So let's just pull that a little bit further. Let me just tie that knot on a bow. And actually, if you're if you're adding the um, gold hello, you need to pop your twine along this scallop so it overlaps the word love you. If you're not going to include the gold hello sentiment then you could use a scallop higher up to tie the twine. There we are. And I'll just faff with that bow as always, holding it steady with my thumb, pulling those tails down. Now that 
tail doesn't want to sit straight and I think it's because it needs to go behind the bow. Let's pop it behind and see. There we go. Much better. Just pull that tail a little bit shorter. Super. So we've got our bow and I'm just going to stick this whole layer down now. Again, glue of your choice, wet glue or tape glue. These are really quite simple but very pretty way of just altering the note cards. And of course in the catalogue there are suggested ways of just popping these note cards together. I just wanted to um, alter them slightly, do something a little bit different. So I'm going to pop that hello on and I'm actually going to use the tiniest bit of, a, of dry glue behind and because I need a tiny bit I'm going to use a glue dot in this instance rather than tape glue. Now I'm going to use the end of my snips to lift that glue dot and it's just jumped off somewhere and I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> well that's the most bizarre thing. Now I can't see it. Okay. I'm going to pop that behind and because my hello sentiment is so small I'm going to fold the glue dot in half. And the reason I'm using a glue dot over liquid glue is firstly, oh just found my escapee glue dot, there it is. Firstly because the minute you get any wet glue onto foil it can be really, it can make a really nasty smeary mark. And secondly, because we're going to stick this over the top of that piece of twine, we need something that's going to really stick and wet glue would just soak into that twine. Now we're just going to finish off that simple note card with some of your champagne rhinestones. And I'm going to take a large one, a medium one and a small one. And I'm going to just pop them up the self adhesive. I'm going to go large in the bottom, medium. And then the smallest one. And that's card number two. Really simple, but really effective, I think. Just a nice way of changing out the card. That's card number two. And let's have a look at card number three. So for this one, we're going to use a striped card base. We're going to take the Large Hearts card topper and we're going to stick that straight down. Flat to the note card. We're going to do the same with the second vellum doily that we did with the first. So just a little bit of um, tape glue or a glue dot just to stick it down so it doesn't move. Put that down so it's nice and central. And we're going to take our piece of petal pink cardstock. And before we stick this down to the card, we're going to position those envelopes again. So I'm going to take one of the paler ones for the middle and two of the darker ones for either side and we're going to use exactly the same technique as we did with the other card. So first of all I'm going to lay them out just to eyeball how much space I have and they're going quite nicely side by side so I'm going to choose to stick the middle one down. Just checking that I feel I've got it in the middle. And you can see that demonstrates perfectly that by popping a blob of glue in the middle, I just get that wiggle room and make sure I can position the piece exactly where I want it. And we'll just do that third one to the left. There we go. 
and I've still got wiggle room so I'm just going to move them along a bit I'm happy with that now before we do anything else we're going to I've just got some glue now I'm going to go ahead and pop our twine round exactly the same method as before I'm going to have plenty hanging off one side and just go around once and then trim there we go and I'll have a knot and a bow just get my twine in my correct hands there we go get our bow where we want it I can trim those ends I'll have a little bit hanging off and that's ready to stick on the main body of the card so I'm going to actually use the tape glue for this one again because I'm sticking onto something textured I want to get good adhesion so I'm going to use stamp and seal tape runner glue and for this one, get that position nicely in the middle. And you want to just keep your eye out to make sure that we don't see any of the hearts underneath. And that piece should just cover it nicely. Press that down and that tape glue will stick to the base card through the doily. But just adding that doily adds a little bit of extra texture. I thought that was really cute. And I'm actually going to pop this sentiment on one dimensional and I can see that that sentiment just needs trimming down a little bit to make sure it's the same width as the envelope so I'm just going to use one single dimensional in the middle just big enough perfect size over top of that middle envelope just to say hi and we'll finish this one off with some more of those gorgeous champagne rhinestones and again I'm going to use three and I'll use a large one a medium one there, and a little one down here Grab the glue dot. Let's pop the glue dot that comes with it and let's pop the rhinestone on the top. I'm going to use my tapey pig tool with the putty end to pick that up and pop it down on top of the glue dot. So the rhinestones are self adhesive and they have like a glue dot underneath, so sometimes when you pick them up with your fingernails or your snips, they do just come apart. And that's card number three. Note card number three finished. And the last card, last note card in this little set is this one. And we're going to take a spotty card base. Okay, now just finish that crease. We're going to take our final card topper. And before I stick that down, I'm going to put the twine around the middle. And I'm going to actually be quite precise about this. I'm going to have a look at my original card and just see how many, how many scallops. So from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I used a valley, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it would have been on a, to be precise for the middle, it would have been on a, um, a bulge rather than a valley. So if we count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I want to tie my twine around there. And if I want to, just I can just mark that with a pencil just to make sure I remember which one. And I'm going to take my twine again. Make 
making sure we get the right bump across the other side. There we go. Now if you hate tying little tiny bows with twine, you can always add the twine for the texture just by laying a loop underneath, a loop that just pokes out one side. Now this bow needs to come across to this side and I'm not going to trim it just yet. I'm actually going to pop my envelopes on to this layer before I stick it down so that I can adjust the bow to where it needs to be. So again I'm going to use that slightly paler envelope in the middle with the two darker ones either side and for laying out the positioning of this one I'm just going to stick this envelope down with um, a dimensional and actually what I'm going to use this time is either a small dimensional or around the edge of my large dimensionals I'm going to actually use a piece of this strip So waste not, want not, would never throw that bit away. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of that. And I know my twine will just nestle in the middle. There we go. And all I'm doing is eyeballing that I'm in the middle this way. that twine is nestled in the middle I can adjust that and pull that right up against the edge of the envelope and I can just simply stick the other two down And now I'm going to go ahead and stick this whole base onto my card. And I should have pointed out just to take care that you don't run your glue too close to the edge where those pierced holes are because it will squish through. And now I can trim that twine a little bit. And I'm going to pop my slightly wonky sentiment, but I think it just shows that it's handcrafted. And I'm going to finish off by using some of the resin hearts again. I'm going to use some of the white ones and um, I'm going to pop some, some of the rhinestone gems as well. So let's have some of those resin hearts. I just love how they fit perfectly. And finally some more of the rhinestone jewels. So let's just pop three on there. And that's card number four. Oh, and I hope that you've enjoyed making these cards. Let's bring them all back in to have another look. So, two landscape and two portrait. And I hope you've enjoyed making them and just to see how you can use a pack of note cards with envelopes. Oh, I'm thinking of the envelopes. If you did want to, the envelopes are beautifully printed with the gold foil dots inside. But if you did want to decorate your envelopes, there is a really pretty, tiny heart shaped stamp in the stamp set, which you could use, which we used on the first kangaroo card and we could decorate the envelopes with little hearts 
if we wanted to because the heart motif runs across all of the note cards so we could simply pop try not to get my head in the camera keep head butting it simply pop two or three little hearts in the corner of the envelope just something to add and that's the end of the note card session hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much